we go up to God and we ask Him for all these material things. But if you take guidance from saints, how do they pray? Nathan ki ho tamanna aur na jan ki koi chahat ho na arma shayari ka ho na hamdam ki zarurat ho This is in Urdu and the sanskrit interpretation of this is nadhanam najanam na sundarim kavitam va jagadesh pamaye mama janmani janmani ishvare bhavatat bhakti rahai tu ki tvai o lord i do not want any wealth i don't want you to bless me with wealth now do i want beauty Nor do I want people who are I don't want popularity. Nor do I want any kind of uh, quality like making of poetry or the art of drawing or painting. I don't want any of these because these are going to take me far away from you. It will lead to ego. I don't want these temporary things. All I want is that I do not mind being born into this world in any form so long as I have unflinching selfless love for you. This is true love. There is no asking. All that the devotee desires is to please the one he loves. The sage Narad ji calls it tat sukh sukhitva. to love for the sake of the happiness of the other person we've never heard of such a love we've never experienced it you must have heard of the great saint ram krishna paramhansa the guru of swami vivekananda towards the end of his life he happened to suffer from cancer now some of his devotees they came up to him they knew that he was very close to the divine mother and he could ask for anything he desired so some of them suggested to him why don't you ask the divine mother to cure you she would be willing to do it any time and ram krishna paraman said shame on you You have not understood who God is. You have not understood what this world and this body is all about. You want me to take my mind away from the blissful lotus feet of my divine mother and concentrate it on the cage of blood and flesh. I am supposed to leave the world. I will leave the world whether I'm healthy or I have cancer. I am not going to pray to my divine mother for these insignificant things. <laughs> so we have always had a relationship of give and take even with God. And that's why we have never really acquired the true wealth which he is ready to give. Vivekananda advised he said if you want to enter into the door of divine love then make a bundle of your desires and leave it outside the door before you go in because if you want the real thing you have to empty yourself of the temporary people often are scared they think that devotees or yogis they are people of self denial they renounce everything and you're scared but that's not true at all on the hand, other hand is just the opposite because they hold on to the highest they renounce the temporary insignificant limited joys of the world 
for the eternal, un unlimited, everlasting treasures of the spiritual world. So how can we say they have renounced? They have got the real thing and we have the unreal. <coughs> so love is where there are absolutely no claims. Love has got no conditions imposed and love is, as I said, for the sake of the happiness of one's beloved. This is how the saints love the Lord. And that's why they were able to serve humanity in spite of all the ridicules, in spite of all the abuses that we imposed upon them. They were not bothered at all. Whenever saints have come into this world, they have never been free of ridicule from our side. But they don't mind. Why? Because they serve the Lord selflessly. They serve the Lord to please Him. So things that they have to experience in this world, they do not matter to them at all. And this is the lesson that we have to learn. To love for the sake of pleasing the Lord. Not to ask anything. Such a love will then increase. If we have desires, then there are always speed breakers in our love. If your desire is fulfilled, oh, the Lord is so merciful, you are wonderful, even in the world. If your desire is fulfilled, your love grows. And if your desire is not fulfilled, the love comes down. So it goes up and down, it sways to and fro. It's not constant, it's like a swaying pendulum. And eventually it starts decreasing. Love in the material world has been compared to a shadow. Early in the morning if you watched a shadow, it's really very wrong. And gradually it gets to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually at noon time, it just seems to be not there. It's kind of within yourself. And after 12 o'clock noon, your shadow starts gradually increasing, increasing, increasing and then it becomes really long by evening. So material love can be compared to the shadow from morning to noon and spiritual love, divine love can be compared to the shadow that starts from noon and goes to even. It's ever increasing. That's why we get frustrated in love in the material world. Because it's not constant and it also decreases because it's based upon conditions and qualities. A married couple, 20 years married, they were watching a program on TV and there was a very violent love scene. The woman, she moved closer to her husband and very endearingly said to him, my dear George, why don't you make love to me like this any longer? He was unmoved and he said to his wife, Do you know how much they are paying that person down there? So eventually in material love, when we have things like this happening, we get frustrated. The thirst for pure love can only, only be fulfilled by the ocean, the source of love, that is God himself. Now in order to love God, you might say, we can't see him. How do we have love for God? The first thing to remember is that we are not to worship God as the Lord Almighty. Somebody up there with rewards in one hand and punishment in the other, that's not love. It's just a kind of worship with fear. Wherever there is love, there is no fear at all. <coughs> we have to think of the Lord as somebody who is close to us. In our uh, Sanskrit quotation, most of you must have heard, 